So this is going to be a tutorial on the basics of rotoscoping and After Effects. And firstly, I'm just going to go through the manual process and then I'm going to look at uh, various other techniques as well. But the simplest way to rotoscope something is to um, basically draw a mask around it. I'm just going to load in this piece of footage here. And um, as you can see, it's uh, a guy in a mask. And um, instead of, um, there's actually two ways you could rotoscope. You could uh, put it on an adjustment layer or you could apply it directly onto the layer itself. But it's always good to work on an adjustment layer separately. So I'd lock this uh, layer down and then I'd choose a pen tool here. And I'd start drawing a kind of mask around the head area. And when you're rotoscoping, never try and... Uh, Kind of do the entire shape in one go so like what you want to do is you want to have lots of separate masks like one for the head one for the knife one for the shoulder and then one for the bicep one for the chest one for the shoulder and that is the most efficient way to rotoscope so lesson number one is basically just keep it simple divide it into um kind of logical objects so this one's going to be the head i'm just going to hit m and I'm going to call this mask head and I'm just going to change the color so I can see it better so the blue kind of stands out a bit more and then you would choose the select tool and you would um, kind of tighten up your mask and I guess it's always good to leave like a bit of like a one pixel kind of um, safe area just don't get too too close but I mean all this can be uh, controlled later on through uh, expansion but so basically once I've kind of um, created the mask I would uh, set a mask path keyframe but the thing is you don't want to just go frame one and then frame two frame three and just keep adjusting the mask there's actually a logical process to rotoscoping and that is you should look for changes in movement direction so if I just study this footage for a second, um, let's have a look. Just as an example, um, the head kind of changes direction about here, if you notice. It's kind of moving back, but then around about this point, it starts moving forward. And those are basically the uh, places you want to place a keyframe. So in the case of this head, just when it's changing direction, here would be a good place for a keyframe. So basically, intelligent kind of um, uh, keyframes is what you should be looking for. You should be looking for uh, changes in the direction of the object, and that's where you want to place your keyframes. Otherwise, you're just going to waste like a lot of time uh, placing just loads of keyframes, and then you have to like it just makes the whole task a lot more uh, painstaking. So this is where I'd want to place one keyframe, and then it's kind of pretty fluid, pretty uh, direct from here to about here. So the movement kind of stops about here. So this is ideally where I'd want to place my keyframe. So I'm just going to do this very rough, um, just for demonstration purposes. So as you can see, if, and then maybe I'd place a keyframe in the middle there, just for uh, just for correction. So I just kind of adjust this. Um, and here it starts to slow down. And another thing you might want to do is you might want to add easing to your keyframes because uh, linear is obviously just going to be a sharp change in direction. Select all your keyframes and uh, click F9 or go right click and go to Easy Ease. Maybe um, in this case the movement will be more accurate because the movement is kind of easing. So if you um, double click a point, it uh, selects the entire mask, which helps us kind of block it out. If you just kind of click one point, um, it'll move one point, and you've got the tangent handle. <clears throat> But if you double click that point, it's going to 
uh, grab all the points and we can just make adjustments kind of using basic transforms like this. And you basically want to look for areas where it kind of slips off. <clears throat> So obviously uh, rotoscoping is a very painstaking process, like there are uh, really good tools such as uh, Mocha to kind of really speed up the process, but this type of uh, manual kind of rotoscoping is always going to be a bit painful and some people just don't have the patience for it, um, but you've got to be quite patient and it kind of depends how good you want it to look. You can have like a kind of average looking uh, track rotoscoping. Um, job or you can have a really good looking job and it's up to you like how far how long you want to carry on kind of adjusting and tweaking the masks um, another thing to note is uh, let's say this point here I've got like a broken tangent and uh, if I want to just normal tangent uh, click sorry hold down control alt and then click it and that'll make it linear so if you hold down control alt and click it again That'll make it a uh, kind of two-sided tangent, basically an unbroken tangent. And if you want to break it, um, I can't remember how you do that. Yeah, if you want to break it, you hold down control. And then that way you can like uh, tweak each kind of handle separately. Like that, so control to uh, control one tangent, control alt to change it back to linear. Click it again, and it becomes a kind of automatic tangent. So that's another important thing to remember. And I'm just trying to think. So yeah, divide your uh, have a look at your uh, video footage. Divide it into sensible objects. Look for uh, changes in uh, motion direction and place your keyframes there. So in this case, about here. And then um, obviously kind of keep everything nice and neat. Work on an adjustment layer. So let's say that's a perfect track. I'm just going to create another object for the sword, say. And then um, I'd maybe give this a different color. I'm just going to call it sword. And make sure uh, the operation is set to add. But if you want, you can have an inverse kind of mask. Like uh, if I set the sword to subtract, that would uh, kind of, if the sword. If this mask was over here, it would subtract from the blue mask. So you got like lots of Boolean operations, but usually you're kind of going for add. There, and yeah, this is quite a difficult job. Let's have a look at the sword. You could place a keyframe here, obviously. And then from here to about here, maybe you can place a keyframe here. I'm just doing this very rough. Maybe make these uh, eased keyframes. Just right click, keyframe, ass keyframe assistant, easy ease. So yeah, painstaking uh, task. But then what you would do is, let's say you've got all your bits and pieces. Just trying to get this to look a bit better. And then I can rotate this, put it down here. So that's kind of slipping off quite a bit. 
well, let's say that's uh, perfect and you're happy with your kind of uh, job, you can obviously adjust feathering for each object. Another advantage of split, splitting things up into objects is you could give like the head kind of no feathering, but then the sword, because it's kind of moving, maybe you could give this a four pixel kind of feather. And um, what I, I would do is I'd click on my video and I'd go to a Luma mat, the above uh, layer. And then that way I can kind of see it. I can see um, my tracking job and click here for a transparent background. So that's pretty rough, but uh, you can see the potential there. And um, I can add the, I can, you can uh, adjust expansion so that you could like pull the head mask in slightly. Another cool uh, plugin is once you've finished, you can add a, a matte simple choker, and then that just tightens everything up. As you can see, it kind of. Um, I don't know if you can see that very well, but if you watch this edge. It kind of eats into the mask, all the roto masks, and it just adds like a. It can sometimes help prevent uh, kind of moving edges. Edges that kind of have like fuzzy animation on them. If you want, if you just want to tighten it up, uh, use a simple choker. So, I'm just going to keep it short. That's a very basic introduction into rotoscoping. In part two, I'm going to look at the Roto brush tool. And then part three, I'm going to show you how to rotoscope with Mocha, which really, really helps like alleviate some of these time uh, consuming problems. Like with Mocha, a lot of this process is automatic. It's basically semi-automatic and um, it's just really helpful. So I hope that helps and uh, thanks for watching.